So let's have to talk, talk about how to set up database mail connectivity in SQL Server. Now the reason we do this is to give us alerts. So we're going to set up the SQL Server agent, which does some automated jobs for us, does some monitoring for us, so we can figure it to do so. When we get feedback on those jobs or those alerts, we may want to send notifications to our administrators. And we would do that via email. But to do that, we've got to set up the tool as database mail inside our SQL Server Management Studio or through Transact SQL Scripting if we want to do it that way. We're going to do it here in our Management Studio. So I'm going to expand Management and I'm going to come down to Database Mail. I'm going to double click on that. This gives us our Database Mail Configuration Wizard. And I'm just going to click Next. And we have three options here. We can uh, set up database mail by performing these following tasks. Manage database mail accounts and policies or viewer change system parameters. Now, since this is the first time we've done it and we're setting up brand new, we're just going to leave this one selected and click Next. Now, you may get a notification that pops up here saying, hey, the database mail feature is not available. Would you like to enable it? Just click Yes or No. And what that does that there is a setting in SQL Server that says whether this feature is enabled or not and that just flips that setting for you and enables it. Now if you've gone in here before, which I have, I've gone in here before so it didn't throw that notification for me, but if you get that just hit yeah I want to enable this feature and it'll work. Now I'm going to set up a profile name and I can set a name, a description, and then I can set up SMTP accounts. So I'm going to set up my profile name and it's going to be SQL Admin, which has just my profile name, not my email address. So SQL Admin, I can set a description if I want and then I can create SMTP accounts. Now you can have more than one SMTP account and what will happen is if you've got more than one it'll try to use the first one or the highest priority one, then it will go to the second then the third then the fourth. So you'll do that for redundancy in case you have an email server that goes down and you still need that notification to come through. So I'm going to add, and I do not have an email uh, server set up in this network. Now ideally this is going to be the email server that you use for your network. So it can be Exchange on-premise, it can be Exchange online, it can be you know, any mail server that's capable of handling SMTP, which is pretty much every mail server on the planet. So. And this is where we set up the information for that server. So I'm going to give the, the account name is going to be SQL Admin. I'm not going to set a description. My email address is going to be SQL Admin at Bassett331.local. My display name is going to be SQL Admin. Let me do that right because that's going to bug me if I don't. SQL Admin at Bassett331.local and you actually can set up a different reply to address and the email address that it goes out to. And the reason for that is you may want to send it from a generic account that's not monitored, but you may want to be able to reply and it go back to your main SQL administrator. So there you'd put, or your SQL admin team. So there you'd put that uh, reply to address here. And then my server email name, mail dot bassett331.local and then the port number if you're using something other than the default port 25 and you can check whether it's going to require SQL authentication. Then we'll our SQL for a secure connection. Then for authentication we can do an anonymous authentication if our server allows it, Windows authentication using the database engine service credentials or basic authentication. And we're going to do basic authentication and I'm going to set the username and the password that would be used for authentication and click OK. So now you see that here is priority one. So that's my first uh, SMTP account. Now I could enable another SMTP account if I wanted to for redundancy. If I'm good with that one, I'll just click Next and then I have my profiles. Now public profile can be used by any user or mail hosted application or I can make it a private profile can only be accessed by a specific user. Now I'm going to want to use this account regardless of or this particular profile regardless of um, 
which user, which SQL admin or user is actually running the process. So I'm going to make this public so that it can be used by anybody and click next. And then here are system parameters, account retry attempts, uh, account retry delay, maximum file size, prohibited types of extensions. All right, you get the idea. I'm going to set my account retry attempts. I'm going to change that to three. Now, the reason that's kind of set for one, normally when you send an email through an SMTP server, it'll retry, your client will retry a few times if it can't get it through. The SQL server defaults to only trying once. And the reason is because it's designed to be able to fall back to those other accounts, those other uh, SMTP accounts on different servers if it can't get through. But since I've only got one, I'm going to go ahead and set my retry attempts to three before it fails. And then finish. It goes through, everything looks successful. And there we go. We have our database mail configured. Now, now that we have that profile there, if I come back in here, you'll see that now I can manage profile security or manage database accounts and profiles. This would let me set up a new one. If I come into manage, then we'll see that we have view, change, editor, delete an existing account or existing profiles. Let's go to profiles and we'll see our existing profile that we can now work with. Okay, so now that I've got that created, I will be able to use that for the uh, SQL Server agent to notify me about alert status or job status. Now, that's one use for database mail. You may want to do other things with database mail, and here's where that public profile thing comes in. I can create a generic account where users then can run a query that will email a report or something like that. So we'll use database mail for that as well. Although in this series of videos, we're going to focus on using it for alert notifications on uh, jobs being managed by the SQL server agent. Now, configuring the SQL server agent is going to be what we tackle in our next video.